I made this noob to pro CapCut tutorial and it reached over a million people. I've taken those exact same effects and tricks and I'm gonna show you how to do them on your phone now. Master these 20 effects and you will be an absolute pro. It doesn't matter if you're editing a YouTube video, a vlog, a wedding video, a client video, whatever type of video you're editing. Master these effects and you'll make stunning videos every single time. As a bonus, I've thrown in a bit of a freebie later on in the video, so please stay tuned for that. Let's get into the effects. A professional never has unwanted watermarks and graphics on their videos. I'm sure we've all seen it, but CapCut adds a made with CapCut at the end of our video. Let's go ahead and turn that off. So go to me, go to the settings in the top right, and you see where it says add default ending. Go ahead and switch that off. So you may have seen this incredible trending effect from Jack Harlow where he isolates a single color in his video. This was done by a professional editor. Let me show you how to emulate this insanely cool effect. Select on your video and go to the adjust tab. Now what we can do is slide over and select HSL. HSL essentially splits the colors of your video so that you can isolate an individual color. If I wanted to remove all the green, I could select on the green circle and decrease the saturation for the greens. Just with that one switch, you can see that we've removed all the color out of the trees. I can see that there's some blue, so I'm gonna go over to my blue tab and remove the saturation from that. And let's go ahead and remove all the saturation from the other colors except orange. So there's a professional editing trick that you can do, just like Jack Harlow, that adds some visual flair to your videos. This next one is an absolute personal favorite of mine and it's CapCut's templates. Guys, there are insane amounts of beautiful templates that reduce the time it takes to edit a professional video. And a professional edit is all about saving time and resource. So go over to the templates tab and you'll find a ton of different templates suited exactly for your video. Let's say I wanted to edit a vlog. Oof. This is stunning. All I have to do is select use template and then select individual clips that I wanna use in that vlog. But don't just select next. Once you've added all your clips, go ahead and click on those individual clips at the bottom and you can then reframe your clips by zooming in and out and choose the exact portion of that clip that you want CapCut to use. For instance, you can see in the beginning of this video, we actually just stand still and we don't walk. The real action of the video starts much later on. So I've dragged my clip to select that portion of later action, and that's a much better edit. Once you've done that for all your videos, go ahead and click next. Now remember what I said about watermarks, this has a CapCut watermark on it. So here's how you remove it. Go to export and select the second option, save and share it to TikTok. This is gonna save that video on your device in HD quality and remove that watermark. This honestly makes professional editing too easy. This next effect is using something called an adjustment layer. And I'll explain a bit more of what that is. But generally as professional editors, we adjust certain colors and things like brightness, saturation and contrast in our videos to make them pop more and look better. With an adjustment layer, you can apply that to the adjustment layer and it'll affect all your clips. So instead of having to manually adjust all your clips, you just do it once and that affects your whole timeline. Let me show you how. On your timeline, go over until you find the adjust tab. Then you can swipe over and just like I said, change things like the brightness, the contrast, and the saturation. Generally, you don't wanna go all the way up to 50, but adding just a couple points adds a professional feel. If I go ahead and click that check mark and zoom out on my timeline, you can see that that adjustment layer is affecting our first clip. When I go back to my second clip, it doesn't have the same colors. So select on your adjustment clip and drag that over your whole timeline. We've now applied those color tweaks to every single clip on our timeline that the adjustment layer is under, allowing all of them to look the same and have those bright, beautiful, professional colors. Remember what I said about mastering these effects? Try focus, especially on this one, because pro YouTubers like Mr. Beast, Matt Louie, and Mr. Who's the Boss use this effect all the time. It's called smooth zoom ins and outs. This adds visual dynamism and a special flair to their videos to keep viewers engaged. Select it on your video, find the point that you wanna start a zoom in. I'm then gonna select this keyframe icon. Swipe a few seconds ahead and create another keyframe. Then what we can do is go ahead and zoom in our video and reposition it so that I'm still perfectly in frame. Now between our two keyframes, we've created an artificial zoom. But this isn't professional just yet, and we need to make this smooth. So go ahead and select the graph icon next to the keyframe icon. We can then swipe over and select one called Quad Ease. Now when I play between those two keyframes, you'll see that we've created a really smooth professional zoom. To go back to the normal framing, 
I can add another keyframe, swipe ahead and add a second keyframe, and then just go ahead and make my video back to normal. Once again, we're gonna apply that quad ease graph and you'll see now we zoom into ourselves and then we zoom all the way back out. I use this trick on every one of my YouTube videos and it really does help to accentuate or bring attention to a certain point that you're making. But like I said, the professional feel comes from making that zoom smooth. So use your quad ease graph. On the topic of keyframes and camera movement, this next one is faking camera movement. I've got this beautiful drone shot that I took on my timeline. But you can see when I scrub through my timeline, all that happens is the drone moves up. I'm gonna to go to the beginning of my timeline and zoom in on my clip. I'm then gonna drag our clip all the way to the right so that it fits within the frame. Go ahead and create a keyframe. Now we can drag to the end of our clip and create another keyframe and drag our clip to the left now so that the right of frame snaps into place. Now when I play this clip, instead of our drone just moving up, we now move left to right too, allowing there to be a very cool reveal effect. The next trick is how to add B-roll or animations to your video. In this scene, I could be talking about YouTube. So I'm gonna go over to my Safari, log into Storyblocks and find the exact clip that I want. I can then download that clip, save it on my device and at the point that I want that clip to integrate, I can go ahead and select Overlay, Add Overlay and select Add. We then can zoom in our clip slightly and as I speak, we then transition to that clip of YouTube. But it doesn't need to end there because you can add overlays like subscribe buttons or even light leaks. Going back to Storyblocks, I'm gonna search subscribe button and then find one that I like. I really like this first one. I'm gonna go ahead and select download again. Then I'm gonna go back to add overlay and select that subscribe icon and select add. But you can see there's a problem. We've got a green screen behind it. So all I need to do is stay selected on my subscribe layer, select remove background and choose the chroma key option. We can then drag over that green, which will remove all the excess green from our video. We now have a beautiful subscribe icon that I can reframe and put on my video, which then when we play, it pops up and we get this cool subscribe effect. Lastly, what about something like a light leak? There's an overlay called a light leak that you can overlay on your videos. Let me show you what it looks like. By searching light leak on Storyblocks, you'll find a ton of different beautiful light leaks that you can use. I personally like this one right here. Once you've downloaded it, let's go ahead and go add overlay and find that light leak that we downloaded. Now that it's on our timeline, we can make sure it covers our whole timeline. Scroll over to splice and select the filter option. I'm then gonna turn my opacity down to around 18. Now when I play my timeline, you can see in the top right that we've added this beautiful but subtle light leak. You can create an entire video on your phone just by using a site like Storyblocks. You've just seen a fraction of what they have. There's other things like images, sound effects, music, and so much more. I also love how there's a download button right on top of the video so you can download them onto your phone and get editing right away. If you're looking for the most amount and the best editing material, go ahead and click that first link in the description. What I also love is you don't have to pay per download. Like we downloaded a bunch of different assets here, but with a monthly or an annual subscription, you can download as much as you want. What's cool is you can get two additional months free when you sign up for an annual plan, but you have to go to storyblocks.com forward slash Matt Louie to take advantage of this limited time offer. And it is limited because I know they're removing it soon. So please, for your sake, go ahead and register. This next one is a 3D camera movement. With your screen recording or your icon or element on your timeline, go ahead and select that, go to animations and choose combo. Then search for one called flip. Select the flip six icon, make sure that that animation happens over your whole timeline and you'll now see that we've created this 3D camera effect. I love using this while I speak because it adds some movement to an otherwise relatively boring screen recording. Did you know that you can actually do a cool draw effect in CapCut? Let me show you how. By selecting text, we can select the draw icon. Then choose a certain marker that you like and I'm gonna go ahead and draw my actual word. Our handwriting is now on our video. Then by selecting on that layer, I can go to animations and choose one of the animations that looks like it's actually being drawn in real time. By changing the duration of that animation, this creates a very realistic draw effect. This is a great trick to personalize your videos and add some of your own handwriting on top of them. You can track things like text, objects, stickers, and even images to people or other objects in your videos to create a really cool visual effect. For this example, I'm gonna be using a text layer. So I can go ahead and select my text layer and let's just write something like 100K subscribers. 
select it on my text layer, swipe over until you find the tracking option. Now I wanna go ahead and track my face so that our text moves in the same motion as my face. So I make that block a little bit smaller and then select start tracking. When I play my timeline, you can see that that 100K subscribers text moves exactly the same left and right, up and down as my face. Tracking is a trick that professional editors use all the time in the videos to add some movement to the objects I described earlier. On CapCut Mobile, you can remove the background even if you're not in front of a green screen. Select on your video, swipe over to remove background, and then say auto removal. We can then go ahead and click that check mark. We can then choose whatever background we want to be placed behind us. I like this option right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and select add, and then select it on ourselves, we can go ahead and click overlay. You can see when I play my timeline, we now have myself with a brand new background. And a great use case for this is now when I point up to the side of the screen, we can place our text which stands out clearly on the new background that we've chosen. CapCut has thousands of stickers that we can choose from, but sometimes the stickers are a little bit gimmicky. That's when a site like Storyblocks comes in where we can find more assets like arrows, and certain stickers that we really like. In this case, I've overlaid an arrow animation. When it's on our timeline, all I need to do is go to splice, and when it's got a black background, select the lighten option. That's gonna remove the background for us. We can then reframe that arrow exactly how we want, and now when I click play, our arrow slides in and selects over our 100K subscribers. Are you really a pro if your elements and stickers are always just still on top of your video? This next trick fixes that. In this case, when I play our timeline, our little sticker in the bottom right remains completely still. Let's add some motion to that. Select it on that layer, I'm gonna go to effects, go over to video effects, swipe over until you find party, and then select an effect called play pendulum. We can then click on play pendulum one more time and turn our intensity down, turn our twist to zero, turn sharpen down to zero, and play with your speed to influence how fast or slow that effect happens. In a bit of an anti-gravity way, our astronaut is now moving in our frame and we've applied some smooth motion to that sticker. You can apply play pendulum to whatever overlay you have to create a really stunning professional motion effect. Bad audio quality is one of the fastest ways to be identified as a noob editor. You can now fix most instances of bad audio with a click of one button. In our reference video, you can hear that there's a lot of background noise which makes this audio pretty rough. We are here at Second Story Bar Sushi and Grill. Selected on my video, I can swipe over to enhance voice and then toggle that on. Once applied, listen to how this sounds. We are here at Second Story Bar Sushi. With the click of that enhanced voice option, our audio has gone from sounding extremely noisy and unprofessional to much better. On the topic of becoming the best professional editor there is, let's stop and think about this for a second. Have you ever published a video and two days later you realize that you made a terrible mistake? Or have you ever sent a video to a client or a sponsor and they get back to you immediately saying that you made a mistake, that one thing that they kept reminding you of? I used to make a lot of these small editing mistakes as a new editor and some of them almost screwed me over. That's why I've decided to share with you my personal video publishing checklist that I always go through before these videos see the light of day. This is the exact step-by-step -step system that ensures all my videos are error-free, meet my standards, and ready to publish with a peace of mind. You can grab my personal video editing checklist in the description below, so you can always hit upload with confidence and never make those small but nearly fatal mistakes that could get you in big trouble. Go check it out. Almost ironically, before shooting a YouTube video, sometimes my skin just decides to have its own way and a random pimple will pop out. And as I show you in this example, which I recorded today, you can see on the side of my face, there is a nasty pimple. All right, let's go ahead and remove that. Select it on your video, go ahead and slide over to retouch and then select face. I can then go to the retouch tab and clear blemishes. Go ahead and drag that. I mean, in this case, I need 100%. Then we're gonna go over to smooth and I can go ahead and drag that as well. Once you're happy, go ahead and select that check mark. And you can see here, now my skin looks very smooth and we've essentially removed that blemish from looking like an absolute volcano to something more manageable. We're not trying to radically change the appearance of who's on screen, just touch up certain things. Johnny Harris, Vox, and other professional media companies all use this specific effect to drive attention to certain words, the text highlight effect. With an article that has words in it on our timeline, we can go to overlay, add overlay, and then go to CapCut's library. I like this yellow background, so I'm gonna select add, 
We can then zoom it in so that it covers the words that we want to cover. I wanted to cover price drop. So I'm going to zoom it in just like that. Then still selected on that yellow, swipe over until you find crop. And we're going to go ahead and crop this to make it much skinnier. And that's looking perfectly good. I just need to reframe it slightly. Then still selected on that, go to animations, find one called slide right, change the duration of your animation. We can then go to splice and select darken. Now, when we play our sequence, you can see that we've highlighted prices drop. You can add cinematic black bars to frame your video exactly like movies do. In your effects panel, go to video effects and search for movie. Then select the first option called movie and select cancel and the check mark. We can then drag this over our whole timeline. What this has done is it's added those black bars to the top and the bottom of our videos, allowing it to feel much more like a movie. This next one is called Video in Text, and it's a stunning visual effect. Select a black background, just like we have here. This is just a black static image. We can then extend that to however long we want. I think 10 seconds is perfect. Let's go ahead and add a text layer and change this font to whatever we like. Let's go ahead and make that font reasonably sized and place it on our timeline. I'm going to then extend our text layer to fit within our background and move to about three seconds, add a keyframe and move a little ways ahead and add another keyframe. On our second keyframe, we then want to zoom in to our text so that it covers our entire black. Then go to your graphs and select the cubic in option. From here, let's go ahead and export this video. Create a new project and import that video that you just exported. And let's go ahead and add an overlay of the video that we want inside of our text. Once your video is on as an overlay, go to splice and select the darken option. Now when I play our sequence, you'll see that our video is within our text. And as our text zooms in, our video is actually revealed in a really cinematic way. Our second last trick to go from a noob to professional isn't necessarily to do with the editing, but how you present. If I go to the edit tab, I can find an option called teleprompter. This allows us to select the edit icon, type in our text for our script, and then record our video. When I record our video, our text then moves and adjusts so that I can technically read our text and still present in a professional way. A simple but effective tool that every pro should know how to use is the undo button. Let's say I trimmed off a crucial part of our video and I wanted to restore that. I can then select that undo option and that'll restore the part of the video that we actually wanted.